Good evening. Uh, NATO foreign ministers have just uh, met for the first time via secure uh, video conference, and it was a successful uh, meeting, uh, proving that uh, NATO is able to adapt uh, to the circumstances created by the COVID-19 uh, crisis. We uh, addressed a number of different uh, issues, including our missions in Afghanistan and Iraq, and our support for Georgia and Ukraine. But our response to the COVID-19 was at the top of our agenda. <clears throat> we have agreed a joint declaration. We express our deepest um, uh, sympathies with all the victims and uh, with all those affected. We pay tribute to the healthcare workers and all those who are on the front line in our battle against uh, the disease. This includes the men and women in uniform uh, who continue to work daily for our collective security. NATO was created uh, to deal with crisis so we can help. And our alliance is playing its part. Today, we decided to direct our top commander, General Walters, to coordinate the necessary military support to combat the crisis to speed up and step up assistance. For instance, by identifying the airlift uh, capacity to ensure that medical supplies uh, are delivered, coordinating uh, on any surplus capacity or stocks, and better matching requests from, uh, for support with offers from allies and partners. He will also impact implement simplified uh, procedures for rapid air mo mobility in coordination with Eurocontrol, using the NATO call sign for military relief flights. We will also convene a meeting of NATO defence ministers in mid-April to review the support we are providing to allies, take decisions on any further steps, uh, and start assessing the medium and long-term implications for our resilience, the continuity of our essential work, and the broader geostrategic picture. I'm grateful uh, for the further offers uh, of assistance which NATO allies made today, and for the substantial support that allies have already provided including by airlifting critical medical supplies from across the globe, providing medical personnel and equipment, harnessing all our resources to deliver innovative responses, and ensuring transparent and timely information to overcome this global pandemic and to combat disinformation. While we focus on our common fight against COVID-19, we know uh, that other threats and challenges have not gone away. NATO's primary responsibility is to deliver security and defence for almost one billion people. General Walters updated ministers on the state of our military preparedness. NATO's ability to conduct operations has not been undermined. Our forces remain ready and our crucial work goes on including in our multinational battle groups in the east of the Alliance, NATO air policing and our maritime deployments. NATO military medical staff remain vigilant, monitoring the impact for NATO troops deployed on operations. We continue to adapt uh, to the COVID-19 crisis but we also continue to plan, prepare and act to maintain our security now and in the future. Today, ministers agreed uh, on NATO's next steps to fight terrorism, build stability and strengthen our partnerships across the Middle East and North Africa. Ministers agreed to enhance our training mission in Iraq, taking on some of the training activities of the Global Coalition, including the training and education of non-commissioned officers, engineers and federal police. This is being done uh, in full consultation with Iraqi authorities and the Global Coalition. Ministers also discussed what more we could do to, across the wider region. This includes more help to partners with reforms and capacity building, 
NATO-led exercises with a focus on fighting terrorism, and deepening our partnerships in the region, including with the African Union. We also discussed uh, Afghanistan and our continued commitment to long-term peace and stability in the country. To support the peace efforts, we are reducing our presence to around 12,000 by the summer. No decision for further reduction has been taken, and all our steps will be conditions-based. We welcome efforts to set up an, an, an inclusive team uh, for the inter-Afghan negotiations. We call on the Taliban and all potential actors to play their part. This includes reducing violence. This is the time for, Afghan, uh, for Afghans to show national unity in their national interests, to achieve peace in Afghanistan, but also to fight COVID-19. We decided to deepen our partnerships with Ukraine and Georgia even further, including with exercises in the strategic Black Sea region, as well as uh, joint work to counter hybrid warfare and uh, efforts to share more air traffic radar data, making the skies safer for all. We also agree to increase NATO's cooperation with the United Nations with a package of measures to help with, U, uh, help with uh, UN peacekeeper training. This includes medical care, countering improvised explosive devices and communications. And ministers formally launched the reflection process to further strengthen NATO's political role. It will lead, uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, <coughs> I will lead this process with the support of a group of experts. Finally, we welcome the foreign ministers of the Republic of North Macedonia, which is now a full member of the alliance. This is an important step to forward for the stability of the Western Balkan region and of Europe. And it shows that in uncertain times, we must further strengthen our multilateral institutions. institutions global challenges demand global solutions. COVID-19 is making this clear. And as a transatlantic alliance, NATO is determined to continue playing its part. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. <clears throat> and the first question will go to Nick Fiorenza from Jane's Defence, who joins us from London. Hello, Secretary General. Actually, I've uh, escaped to Belgium uh, to self-isolate. But um, in any case, I, um, you've... you've addressed some of uh, what I want to ask, but I'll, I'll uh, ask another, nevertheless. How does um, COVID-19 um, affect uh, NATO's deterrence and collected defense capabilities to defend its eastern flank, the U.S. commitment to Europe and allied solidarity in general? And specifically, um, are the Baltic states in greater danger of Russian attack during the COVID-19 crisis? All allies are focused on uh, the consequences of the COVID-19 crisis and how to combat uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And we discussed at the foreign ministerial meeting how we can step up and speed up the support of NATO to the civilian efforts to deal with the uh, coronavirus and the consequences of the uh, health crisis. At the same time, NATO's core responsibility is to make sure that this health crisis doesn't become a security crisis. And our core uh, task is to continue to provide uh, credible deterrence and defense in the midst of a health crisis. And that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, so we continue our missions and operations. Uh, we maintain our operational readiness. Uh, we continue uh, to patrol the skies with air policing. Our naval uh, deployments uh, uh, are maintained. And uh, our battle groups in the eastern part of the alliance are uh, up and running, as uh, are our missions and operations elsewhere, like, for instance, uh, our efforts to fight uh, terrorism in Afghanistan and uh, other places. So NATO is functioning, NATO is working uh, in uh, or despite of uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, 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 crisis. Of course, some of our personnel are affected. Uh, uh, some have contracted uh, the uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, 
Uh, but the missions, the operations, the readiness of NATO uh, continues uh, because uh, NATO was created to deal with crisis. Uh, and uh, we have uh, long experiences uh, and uh, many plans and a command structure which is developed uh, and trained and tested uh, to deal with, uh, with the crisis. This is also, of course, uh, the case for the Baltic countries, where we maintain our presence, air policing, the battle groups, and, um, and uh, uh, where we also have, of course, the ability to reinforce uh, if uh, needed. We have seen... Um, uh, we have seen the Russian military presence uh, close to our borders. So we recently saw a snap exercise uh, in the western and central military district. Uh, we have seen uh, significant uh, Russian uh, naval presence in the North Sea. So of course we follow, uh, we uh, intercept flights, uh, we, we follow uh, uh, military movements as we ha always do, uh, and we continue to uh, 24-7, provide credible deterrence and defense also in the midst of the uh, coronavirus crisis. Okay, we'll uh, go to the next uh, journalist on the line and then we'll try to go back to Bucharest after that. So we'll go to Gül Sonomut from NTV Turkey. Secretary General, good evening. So my question is, at Warsaw Summit in 2016, uh, leaders were very premonitory since they have committed to enhance resilience of the alliance and to enhance resilience there are seven baselines requirement one of them is being able to deal with mass casualties so my question is did you discuss this issue normally in 2020 you were supposed to release the third report on the state of civil preparedness of member states when will you publish this report and particularly, will you resume the SEPSI, Civil Emergency Planning Committee work, since a lot of EU NATO allies were not very much willing to do uh, so? And you have discussed this issue of reflection process. Will you ask from member states to have more power uh, in order, in the framework of Article 3, to go and be able to verify that each member state is ready for civil preparedness if there are shortcomings that they're ready to fill the gap. Thank you. The coronavirus uh, uh, crisis uh, has reminded us all uh, of uh, the importance of uh, resilience, uh, because this is about protecting uh, our societies against different threats, different crises. And uh, uh, that's also the reason why actually NATO has a, a core a task or a, a main responsibility to ensure resilience. It's, uh, it's enshrined in uh, Article 3 of uh, our founding treaty, the Washington Treaty, uh, states clearly that allies uh, are responsible for resilience of their societies uh, to be uh, more able to deal with a uh, crisis, security crisis, but also other crises. And this is also very much in our modern societies intertwined. Um, therefore, we have updated our resilience uh, guidelines uh, and, uh, and it proves the importance of uh, these guidelines, the basic requirements, on issues like uh, healthcare, uh, dealing with mass, uh, ma mass casualties, as you mentioned, but also infrastructure, uh, the ability to move, also to have uh, a transportation infrastructure in, uh, in place, also in times of uh, a crisis, communications, decision making and many other uh, areas. Uh, I think that or the, all allies and NATO is now focused on how can we deal with the consequences, how can we fight uh, the COVID-19 crisis. At the same time, we all understand that uh, we also have to start uh, looking into uh, the long-term uh, uh, consequences, uh, the lessons uh, learned, and how can we be, be uh, how, how can we all be better prepared for the next crisis because there will be a new crisis. Uh, and uh, I think it's obvious that uh, uh, allies have some homework to do. Uh, we have as alliance to go through our uh, guidelines for resilience. We have to improve resilience and we have to uh, learn lessons uh, from these, uh, uh, this crisis uh, to be uh, better prepared for uh, the next uh, uh, crisis. Then um, uh, the reflection process uh, may actually, of course, address how we also can uh, uh, strengthen NATO's political uh, ability to prepare 
to, to prepare for crisis, to prevent crisis, and uh, deal with crisis when they uh, happen. Uh, and um, and uh, um, uh, the, the civil emergency uh, planning group is already uh, working, so we are dealing with these issues already. The main focus is to combat uh, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, the coronavirus, uh, help uh, assist the civilian efforts. Uh, and then uh, 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 we have to understand that uh, uh, at the time there will also be there will also be a time for uh, drawing the uh, right lessons and uh, strengthening our resilience against the crisis. Thank you. We now go to Mustafa Sawa from Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty uh, in Prague. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary uh, General. Uh, I have two questions uh, for you. Um, you know that uh, the Islamic State uh, group has taken responsibility um, for the recent uh, high-profile attack on the Sikh minority community in Kabul. Uh, so uh, how uh, can the Taliban give uh, monitorable and verifiable guarantees that no terrorist uh, group would use the Afghan soil against NATO and US interests in the future? and that thousands of prisoners of the Taliban, if freed all, will not return to the battlefield against the Afghan and international forces. The second question is, uh, uh, what's your message to the Afghan leaders, namely uh, President Ghani and his uh, political rival, Abdullah Abdullah, to do at this pivotal juncture? And what's NATO's uh, long-term commitment towards Afghanistan? Thank you very much, sir. NATO and uh, NATO allies uh, remain committed to Afghanistan and we have stated clearly that we will continue to uh, provide support, uh, we will uh, continue our train assist and advice uh, mission uh, and we will continue with the funding for the Afghan uh, forces. At the same time we have stated clearly that the aim for NATO is not to stay in Afghanistan forever. The aim for NATO is to create the conditions for lasting peace, for stability in Afghanistan. And therefore we um, strongly support the uh, peace efforts. Uh, we welcome the, the uh, agreement between uh, Taliban and, uh, and uh, the United States. Uh, I was in Kabul when the uh, agreement was signed in Doha, and uh, we also had a declaration from Kabul, and, and all NATO allies uh, support these efforts uh, uh, strongly. Uh, knowing that this will be a hard and long and difficult way uh, towards peace. Uh, knowing also that the best way for NATO to support the peace efforts is to remain committed uh, with uh, our presence in Afghanistan, uh, because by doing so we are sending a clear message to Taliban and to, to, to any other adversary that, that, uh, we, uh, that they will not win on the battlefield. Uh, they have to sit down and make real compromises at the negotiating table. And one of the main tasks, one of the most important achievements with a, a deal between um, the United States and Taliban was that they actually agreed uh, to initiate inter-Afghan negotiations. This is something the Taliban has rejected for a long time. And Taliban also uh, agreed uh, to uh, denounce, uh, to, uh, to, to break all ties with uh, terrorist groups like uh, Al-Qaeda. Then we have to make sure that this agreement is implemented. That's the reason also why we have stated clearly that our, uh, any reduction of our presence in Afghanistan will be conditions-based. Uh, and uh, that's also the reason why we have made it clear that even with a, a new force level of roughly 12,000, also going from 16,000, the current uh, uh, number of troops in the NATO mission in Afghanistan, down to uh, uh, 12,000, which is what we foresee by the summer as part of the peace efforts, with that level of troops, we can continue training. And actually, uh, not many years ago, we had uh, roughly 12,000 troops, the same, roughly the same level of troops, uh, conducting the, uh, uh, the, 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 the same mission for, uh, for, for, the, for the Afghans. So we have to see progress. We have to see that Taliban is delivering. We have to see progress in the inter-Afghan negotiations uh, to then uh, gradually reduce our uh, presence. It is conditions-based. But we believe that the only way to achieve peace in Afghanistan is to have an Afghan uh, 
own the process. Uh, the Afghans have to make peace in Afghanistan, and that's the reason why we support these uh, efforts. Um, uh, we, of course, uh, uh, continue to call on all Afghan uh, political figures to seize this moment and to uh, overcome any differences and to uh, uh, stand united uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in also negotiating with uh, the Taliban to try to find a lasting uh, peace. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we can now uh, go back, I think, to Bucharest, Radu Tudor from Antena 3. Thank you, Juan Alungescu. Secretary General, the Romanian uh, defense uh, built two temporary military hospitals and paid two strategic NATO flights to South Korea for medical equipment. Could you please comment this action, what NATO can do more through allied MODs and uh, if the Euro Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Center can become more operational against coronavirus? Thank you, Secretary General. First of all, I welcome uh, uh, what Romania now uh, does. And uh, it shows that uh, Romania, as all other allies, are now mobilizing their armed forces to support the civilian efforts to uh, combat the uh, coronavirus. Uh, and NATO uh, support those efforts. The, the Disaster Relief Coordination Center has uh, uh, been important, an important tool to, uh, to mobilize resources from NATO allies and then to make sure that those allies who are really in need or who need uh, these extra resources uh, get these extra resources. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Romania has used our strategic airlift uh, uh, program uh, to transport uh, a lot of heavy, a lot of equipment uh, from uh, uh, from China and, uh, and from and from South Korea uh, to uh, Romania, um, and uh, and uh, and this is just an example of how uh, our airlift capabilities. Uh, are important uh, in uh, helping, supporting allies dealing with uh, these uh, crises. Um, uh, many other uh, allies have done the same. Uh, we have helped to transport, we have helped to set up uh, different uh, 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 mechanisms to support uh, allies. And, uh, and, and also our procurement agency has actually helped uh, to uh, uh, allies to, to get the right equipment and to make the deals that enable them, uh, enable them to, to get uh, uh, critical medical uh, uh, equipment. Uh, so allies and NATO have together already done a lot. Uh, just uh, two days ago, a Turkish plane landed in, in, in Italy and Spain with, uh, with, with equipment. We have many other examples. Uh, the, the challenge now is to make sure that we continue and that we do more. So that's the reason why we have tasked uh, our Supreme Commander, Sarkar, uh, uh, today uh, to uh, step up and speed up the way NATO allies are uh, supporting each other and mobilize more resources, utilize uh, NATO structures, mechanisms even uh, uh, more. Uh, to continue uh, to provide a critical uh, support. NATO was created to manage crisis, so we have experience. We have done uh, similar things before. Uh, we have um, uh, capabilities also when it comes to medical ev evacuation. Uh, we have uh, transport capacity, and we see also in the different nations how uh, military uh, uh, force, uh, mil military personnel are now being used uh, in many different areas, including from uh, border control, disinfection, uh, transportation of patients, uh, setting up field hospitals, and so on. So NATO's role is to support, coordinate, mobilize um, uh, these efforts. And that's also the reason why we have decided to convene a defense ministerial meeting in a couple of weeks um, uh, to make sure that we take stock of uh, NATO's efforts that we uh, uh, listen to uh, uh, Sarkar, will, who will then brief us on, on the work of uh, the NATO military structures to support allies. And that also provides us the platform uh, when, the mini when the defense ministers meet to take any further uh, decisions. Uh, so, so we are mobilizing NATO in support of the civilian efforts to combat the uh, coronavirus. Thank you. Uh, we now come back to Brussels and uh, Yuri Sheiko from Deutsche Welle. Uh, Secretary General, yeah, yes. can you hear me? Yes, uh, yeah, I can. I have to, 
Yeah, I have two questions on Ukraine. Can you please explain a little bit deeper uh, what are those measures to support Ukraine that uh, were adopted today? As far as I understand, there are two initiatives or programs or measures. It's the first question. And the second question, uh, I wonder if you have any comments on the situation in the eastern Ukraine uh, in relation to this coronavirus crisis. As far as I know, there are a lot of reports that uh, monitoring mission of OECE has problems in accessing uh, those territories. Thanks a lot. When it comes to eastern Ukraine, uh, we see a Donbass. We see that uh, despite uh, the call for, from Russia to uh, uh, for a pause in military activity, uh, Russian-backed separatists um, uh, continue to attack Ukrainian uh, forces uh, in the east of, uh, of the country. Uh, and we see uh, uh, ceasefire violations uh, continue both in uh, Donetsk and in Luhansk. Uh, and uh, we uh, see that uh, uh, also because these ceasefire violations are uh, not only reported by Ukraine, but are also confirmed by the OSCE monitors. Um, it is, a, it is a additional challenge or problem that the OSCE monitors have now uh, even uh, bigger problems with uh, uh, conducting their tasks uh, uh, because uh, they are restricted uh, in their uh, ability to move freely. Uh, and therefore, uh, they are not able to report uh, in the way they should. Uh, um, the COVID-19 um, uh, 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 crisis, the coronavirus, is used as a kind of excuse to further limit the work of the OC monitors, uh, and this makes the situation in eastern Ukraine even more uh, difficult. So we call on Russia uh, to stop the fighting uh, in Ukraine. They, 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 they back. They. They support the uh, separatists uh, who are responsible for continued uh, ceasefire violations. And, uh, and we also need a ceasefire, the ceasefire to be fully implemented to be able uh, to fight uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, in uh, the uh, uh, country. Um, uh, the package for, uh, uh, for we agreed for Georgia and, uh, and uh, Ukraine is about uh, uh, exercises, it's about uh, uh, access to more uh, NATO educational uh, programs, uh, it's also about sharing a radar picture uh, that can improve uh, the, the, the understanding of uh, activities in the air in the region. So this is uh, yet another step, yet another uh, element in the very uh, strong and, uh, and enduring partnership between uh, NATO uh, and uh, Ukraine. Thank you. The next uh, question comes from uh, Ivan Mianovic from the Television of Montenegro. Good evening, Secretary General. Um, can uh, Montenegro and other allies on the Balkan, Balkans count on NATO solidarity in transporting patients touched by COVID-19 in hospitals and other NATO countries who have capacities to host them in case of need? Thank you. This was exactly among the issues we uh, addressed during the meeting uh, today. And uh, we have seen how NATO, NATO allies, military uh, uh, personnel have, uh, in different countries, uh, uh, helped uh, allies uh, with uh, medical uh, transportation, medical evacuation, transport of uh, patients. Uh, in the meeting, it was referred to how, uh, how military planes was used to transport uh, patients from Italy. Uh, to Germany, but there are also some other examples of how, how military uh, planes was used to transport uh, uh, patients, because we have uh, the capabilities, uh, the military has uh, tested, uh, exercised uh, exactly how to, uh, for instance, transport uh, uh, patients. It's something uh, which is integrated in their uh, work uh, as, as military organizations. Uh, we are now... Um, uh, uh, through the NATO Coordination Center, uh, 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 mobilizing more uh, uh, support. Uh, we have tasked Sakur, our Supreme Commander, to uh, identify where there is surplus capacity, uh, where there are uh, equipment, where, where, where there is equipment uh, capabilities available that can be used uh, to support other allies. 
all allies are affected by this crisis, so all allies are in need of uh, uh, capabilities, equipment to address the crisis. But at the same time, we know that some allies have uh, more capabilities than others. And we also know that the effect of the crisis will not be stable, will not be the same for all allies at, uh, at all times. So uh, uh, not all allies will see the peak of this um, pandemic at the same time. And this uh, uh, makes it uh, possible to reallocate some resources, as we all have, all have seen many examples of, uh, to those allies who are more in need and, and, and which see uh, that the crisis is, is peaking. So, so this is the whole idea with uh, tasking Sarkar to coordinate, to identify uh, surplus capacity and to match that surplus capacity uh, with needs in different allied countries. And one element of that is, of course, also uh, transportation. We have seen many examples. Um, uh, NATO uh, uh, coordinates, NATO uh, uh, provides uh, uh, airlift and other capabilities, and allies are doing the same in close contact with NATO. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one last question, uh, which will go to uh, Hamid Haidari from uh, One TV uh, in uh, Kabul, Afghanistan. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Secretary General. I am Hamid Haidari from One TV from Kabul. Yes, please go ahead. Um, my question. Unfortunately, we have uh, technical problems in uh, linking up with Kabul, so uh, that will conclude uh, the, the press conference. So, Secretary-General, back to you. Thank you so much for once again joining me on uh, this uh, virtual uh, press conference. I think it works quite well. Uh, it is a different format, but it uh, shows that we all have to adapt to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And, uh, uh, have a good evening and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, thank you so much.